It's got this little uh, bobcat. Um, the wheel bearing collapsed and the half shaft wore through the bearing, through the top of the axle tube and uh, broke out this little section. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to weld up, weld up where the bearing goes. The little section that's missing is the section that carries the seal. Um, I'll just try and uh, set a little piece in there, weld it all up, take it around the bore and um, see if I can get, get this little machine back in four wheels. Um, I got it as a breaker, uh, missing a lot of parts. Um, unfortunately, it's been lying open to elements for a while. Um, I bought um, the brake lid and mechanism, the chain, chain box lids, so I had to buy uh, the levers and um, all the linkage that goes with them, the floor floor uh, plate that goes inside the cab and um, a couple of rims and wheels and things and uh, hope to get it running. Um, it's a non-runner as it says, been lying out in the elements for a while with hoses disconnected. Um, chain box unfortunately has hot water on it, the chains are rusty but uh, I'm confident I might be able to be able to get it going again um, I tracked down one uh, in England uh, as a breaker for parts so I was able to get all those parts from him and uh, yeah I'll try and get it going so uh, stay tuned we'll get the axle stub welded up and we'll take it from there so I have the welder turned down and I'm only running one millimeter wire. Uh, weld up the entire bearing surface inside the hole, uh, which will include some overhead welding. And then square up the corners on the edge. Uh, so that's why the power is turned down. Uh, after I have it all welded up, we'll get out the trusty four inch grinder, touch it up, hide all the mess and uh, make it look like I knew what I was doing. Um, after it's welded, we'll take it round to the other shop and board out. Um, I cocked up, I left my phone on time-lapse whenever I had a look at the finished welding, so it sort of skips through it, but uh, you'll get a bit of a look at it here. Um, apologies, rushing to get the job done. and. Um, not paying attention. So there you go, you can see the finished welded item. You can hit pause if you want to have a closer look at it, but it turned out very good. Very happy. So we got our own old faithful here. Have enough little left. Just about registering on the load safety scale. So yeah, we're heading for that big door over there. And, uh, Hopefully there's some space in the workshop because we're mental busy at the minute. Mental busy. Just want to get it in out of the rain. Ah, bollocks. Somebody's, somebody's left that there at their backside, so I'll have to go inside and investigate, but anyway. So we've got the uh, bobcat set up on the uh, table for the machine tool to rebore the bearing uh, housing on the end of the axle tube. Um, 
it's not clamped down or clocked yet it's just uh, provisionally set in place so uh, we'll catch up uh, later on as, uh, as our guy Lee um, check him out Lee from Dalton Engineer and he's another YouTuber as well has a great little page where he does a lot of um, home uh, home machining um, uh, so yeah check his page out Dalton Engineering so yeah we'll catch up with him later on as he sets this up um, to bore the end of it uh, I'm taking a bit of risk as um, this little machine actually to the best of my knowledge hasn't ran in the region of six seven years <clears throat> um, taking a gamble that it actually doesn't run uh, but I want to fix the chassis anyway so that at least if it doesn't run I uh, put, put it up for sale that at least somebody could buy a good chassis if they had an engine so uh, we'll get the wheels fixed and then uh, we'll try and get the engine running it'll be the first start in over five years so that should be good uh, we'll check the pumps and motors and everything's working so yeah stay with us and uh, we'll see if she's going to be a runner or not or if she's dead in the water but uh, should be interesting to see uh, see how she goes uh, great engine kabuta engine it's ultra reliable known worldwide and um, world number one engine under 100 horsepower um, i have high hopes that it uh, should start so yeah catch us in a bit so just clocking up the axle uh, preparation for uh, clamping it down and boring out to fit the new bearing on the uh, little Huron little horizontal uh, milling machine so uh, we'll get the cutting tool in it and uh, start some machining I'll go and get the new bearing for some dimensions Got a 3408 uh, Cat V8 here, has had some work during the week as well. So, yeah, I'll check back and we'll do some machining. What do you say, too thigh tight for the bearing? Ah, uh, too, too thigh tight. Even, even slightly tighter in size for size than you're doing. So that's new bearing, and uh, we're going to leave the whole too thigh down on the outside of that bearing. Should make it a nice fit. So, got this uh, big lump of copper, which I used to knock the old bearing out. Um, little trick most of you guys know for removing a bearing race is weld around the inside of it that causes it to shrink and contract with the stresses of the weld and then just by sheer luck this lump of copper is just the right size to jam into it so I'll actually use this to uh, drive the new bearing home and if you're around using a hammer around new bearing you want to use a copper or a nylon mallet <coughs> um, if you're using a steel hammer be very very careful and always use eye protection because bearings or hammers can chip and hit you in the eye so just be very careful so this is the bit that takes more brains than a welder we've got these uh, 
sea spanners here, adjustable sea spanner, <laughs> external micrometer, internal micrometer. Um, so set the internal micrometer and then use that to measure the, uh, the bore size for the new bearing. Take the last cut and uh, fit the bearing. So just doing a little check with the internal micrometer. Far away do you reckon she is? 0.8. 0.8. 0.8. So then the tricky bit is moving this cutting tool out by 0.4 of a mil and you use this uh, clock gauge. DTI was a dial test indicator. What's the smallest increment you can get by hand? Not very much in this no. thing. <laughs> point three. Lovely. I'll give you point six and then I'll leave you point two. Smashing. <clears throat> so run this cut three. I left a little reference there in the corner, you can just see it. That tells us how deep to go. Standard. Oh. That's, that's feeling more like it now. Oh yes. Oh my. <laughs> in there isn't it? I think that's a success. An absolute success. We'll stick the seal in behind that. Job done. Outstanding young man. Outstanding. So that's her new bearing fitted. Just gonna lift, lift. Lift her off the table with our old crane that came out of uh, Clydebank, John Brown Shipyard in Scotland. That's her ready to fit the half shaft and the bearings after cleaning the swarf out, of course. You ever see a flying bog cap before? Magic. Absolutely. That's her on the far left. Take her around the corner and uh, fit, the, fit the new half shaft. Job done. So, yeah. Um, Inserted the axle, put the new bearings on, packed them with grease, slid the sprocket, this is the sprocket, onto the end of the spline shaft, a big bolt on the end, we'll screw that on, that'll tighten everything up, that'll put the bearing race into the outer race of the bearing, which is in this housing here, tighten it all up. And uh, that's the internal work finished. Um, whoever took this machine apart, screwed all these uh, big hoses off the main, the main pump. This is my biggest worry. It's been lying open to the elements for seven, eight years, maybe more. And um, so I'm not altogether sure that the pump or the motors 
are going to be in any shape, but uh, I'm uh, I'm going to tighten these all up, fill it full of hydraulic oil. I can't uh, can't run the engine with these pipes off because oil pumps do not like to be run without oil. So uh, let's tighten all these up, fill it full of hydraulic oil, and then we. Uh, we try the engine to see if it's going to run. So yeah, get all these pipes on in a minute or two, and uh, take it from there. So yeah. It's on to the back of the main pump. Gonna where it's supposed to go. And then this one here comes off the bottom of the main valve block. So that one there is off the bottom of the main valve block. And then we also have an outlet from the main valve block missing. So I'm assuming that something goes from this outlet to this pipe. And I have no idea where those two go to. Um, maybe a connector, main valve block, main pump, I'll check that out. So here we are a little bit later. Uh, the latest update is I got a friend uh, to make me up a connector. From what I can see the only thing that goes in line here is a hydraulic silencer. We didn't have the correct adapter so we just made one with a bit of hose and then the missing line from the main valve block to the boom line here so that's all the hoses connected up internally um, this stage I'm gonna fill fill the hydraulic tank with oil here you can see the outlet out the bottom so we'll fill it up with hydraulic oil and by that stage it should be ready to try and start it so That'll be the point I'll find out whether this is uh whether I'm flogging a dead horse or not. But um but yeah, so um I've had a bit of a bit of a minor slip up. I uh I dropped the bloody steel rim. The rims I have this for this little machine, I dropped it on my finger and smashed the bone on the end of my finger. First broken bone in my life, 39 years old, so I can I count myself pretty lucky and I'll, I'll take out. I just hope the end of my finger doesn't die and fall off, but I think there's blood supply okay. The nail's about to come off, but but yeah, she's alright. Not as bad as my father's face. He came off his electric scooter because he's got bad knees and he has to cover big distances in the workshop every day. He fell off his scooter and landed face first onto a pile of metal. He broke his eye socket his eyebrow, his nose, the bridge of his mouth and broke his cheekbone in about uh, four places. He was in hospital at 3 a.m. had to sleep sitting up that night and then back to work uh, after a head scan in the morning and then straight back to work that uh, the following afternoon with uh, most of the bones on one side of his face broken so, so yeah we can't let a, a sissy little broken finger keep us keep us back so <laughs> So anyway, so yeah, we gotta fill the oil and try and start her. Some pretty wild weather. We got 80 mile per hour winds today combined with hail. Hello December, Northern Ireland. So uh, 
That's me uh, skinning my knuckles and cramping my knees and uh, trying to uh, use metric spanners on Imperial fittings, uh, American machine in uh, metric country. Always makes for some fun. So I'm just getting the hoses on and the chain, chain box lids on and getting a bit further forwards. So that's the little hydraulic hoses filled and uh, the tank filled full of oil and uh, it's less than five gallons as I found out and I spilled the bloody oil everywhere so yeah that's her uh, ready to test start um, put a spare battery I have into it I don't know where it's going to have the guts or not we have the stop solenoid here so I need to jam that forwards it's a mechanical pump so there shouldn't be any other electrical stop prevention taking place so I'll jam that forwards to the run position and then I don't know if I have a key or not but I'm just going to cross the terminals on the starter when I say this thing genuinely has not ran in the ballpark of maybe 8 years maybe more I'm not sure there's something I need to uh, address straight away. Let me make sure that doesn't catch the, uh, the flywheel turning. That would be a nice mess. Um, I don't know what to do with that just at the moment. Bend it out of the way. That'll make a lovely mess if it comes into contact with those killing fins. But anyway. As you can see, look at the rust and the cobwebs and the dirt in here. You see how long this engine has genuinely been sitting. Starter gear, ring gear, everything covered in rust. I hope these uh, belts last a little while. Look at the idler, the tensioner, absolutely brown with old rust. Um, so yeah, I have no idea where this is going to start. I know it's not seized because we tried to start it a number of years ago with no luck. I haven't gone through it. I know all the other YouTubers that do do these cold starts, Bruce Wilson and Lord Muck and you guys. Um, yeah, you're very thorough, you like to change filters and change oil and do this, that and do the other, but uh, yeah, I'm just a bit a bit lazier when it comes to things like that, so <laughs> I loosen the bleeding out in the pump and we've got diesel right to the pump, so uh, I dip the dipstick for oil, so yeah, I'm just going to send it. Um, uh, I'm going to have to use a little bit of a... Uh, what the Aussies call start you bastard made by new lawn look it up otherwise known as easy start or ether um, I'm just gonna give it a little wifter of that um, I don't want to rag it so I'll be using it as sparingly as possible these little kabutas like a good heat to start um, because we're uh, bypassing all that I won't have the heater um, so yeah I'm just gonna give it a little bit of easy start and uh, hope she goes so yeah stay tuned for uh, cobwebs and flipping spiders and water and everything blowing out of the exhaust here if it starts as I said we didn't have any luck in the past don't know why but uh, but yeah we'll try again so yeah as I said as little easy start as possible because uh, if you use too much it ignites uh, in the cylinder with an extremely aggressive bang you can bend rods and break rings and everything nasty so I'm going to use it as sparingly as possible and uh, I don't want to rev it and let the oil get around it a little bit first and uh, we'll see if we can get her going it just won't be as rash as uh, zip ties and bias plies <laughs> check out his videos <laughs> he sends it properly but yeah I'm just going to try and get it going here 
One thing I'm concerned about here, you might get a laugh, is none of the linkage for the travel levers is connected. So we may have a scenario where it tries to walk off the little blocks that I have it balancing on, um, depending whether the pump, pump levers, travel levers are in neutral or not. So yeah, we could end up with a whole lot sitting on the ground and a bit of a mess, but hey, stay tuned. That's what uh, YouTube's for, watching unprofessionals doing their thing. Diesel Creek would say, contact! <laughs> no bueno. Well, that was a major disappointment. The damn thing in the time that has been sitting here has in fact seized. The entire time it's been sitting here it has been in dry storage so go figure that um, I'm hoping there hasn't been head gasket water leakage internally into the cylinder um, it, as I said we did have it turning over in the past turning over very freely um, but that of course could have been three four years ago um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the heater plugs and I'm going to pour something into the cylinder each cylinders each of the four cylinders I haven't quite decided what I'm going to put in yet WD-40 or a little bit of diesel I'm not too sure but yeah we'll pour something in the cylinders anyway and uh, let that sit for a day or two and then we'll uh, we'll try and turn her over. I uh, I had the starter clicking, and it wasn't budging at all. I thought I thought the contacts were bad on the starter, and uh, I put the bar on it, and I uh, levered, and the bloody thing was sea solid. So uh, so you can see where I broke that fin off the flywheel. Um, trying to leave it round and it's stuck fast so yeah bitterly disappointed at this stage um, just gonna have to pour some oil in and hope for the best you can see how long it's been lying here without turning over it's in an absolute state I suppose I was a bit optimistic thinking it was going to turn over, but hey. So yeah, we'll leave it for a few days and uh, come back and try again. So, it's been a few days. And uh, the engine's been sitting soaking with um, penetrant. So, I'm just going to have a little pry here. That's the big crowbar. And see... See, can I get it to turn? Wish me luck. Just about fell on my ass there. Hope nobody was watching. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, she's still stuck pretty tight. Damn it. We'll squirt some more penetrant in and try again another few days. I'll set the camera up so I can get a better pry at it. But yeah, I'm pretty gutted about this because that means there's definitely going to be a little corrosion in the cylinder, which will not do her any favours, but hey, if I get a few years use out of it, I'll be happy enough. So yeah, we'll try it, try it a few days and see. That's a little heater plug. 
got the ton of spray and we'll uh, fill her up. It's definitely going to need an oil change after this. So we'll do all four and try it in a few days time. This is one week later. Uh, it hasn't moved.
So there we have it folks. So I've got this old battery. Um, don't know whether she's charging. Uh, I've just discovered the key is still in the ignition. Um, it's been a week since it's been running. Haven't had time to get back to work at it. But uh, yeah, I just want to see see how the engine's feeling now that I've got got the battery in it. Wow, I thought that was a dud battery. Oh, it's great to see of things. Uh, I have no heat because the heater plugs are not um, screwed in tight yet and connected. So uh, we're just going to try a cold start. Unbelievable. Uh, it's about 13 degrees centigrade today, so quite mild by Northern Irish terms. But that is astonishing. I cannot believe an engine that was so seized starts and runs so sweet. Absolutely over the moon. Totally over the moon. Delighted beyond belief. So, so now I'm fully pumped. Uh, I'm going to continue to put it together. I'm still waiting on a few little linkages. Um, I've got one link. I need to be careful, I don't trap myself. That's notorious, these bobcats. Sometimes the safety system's disabled. People can catch themselves in the arms. So that's the only hydraulic function I have at the moment. And, uh, pump's nice and quiet very responsive everything seems good so we'll get the rest of the linkages get them fitted bolt the seat down and uh, try her out but at the moment it's looking absolutely brilliant over the moon absolutely over the moon so yeah as I was saying I'm pumped I gotta put LED lights on I'm gonna put a beacon on it might treat it to a bit of a paint job new wheels and tires and a new sticker kit um, so yeah I'll do a quick um, time lapse of the final little get details getting finished off and then we'll try her out so yeah guys stay tuned super excited That's a battery bodged in there. It's nice and tight. Solid as a rock. The only thing I'm concerned about. I broke a few of these uh, cooling fins on the flywheel when I was trying to break it free. Um, they're on one side, so I'd have a little concern about the uh, imbalance in the flywheel. So what I might do to rectify that is just as rough and uh, break some off the opposite side. Um, should stop uh, stop any imbalance. Don't think it's super critical, but. Uh, a little bodge, easy rectify it. Ah, uh, frustrating. 
the world has all their own bolt sizes and threads and fittings uh, over here in Northern Ireland part of the UK and Europe well used to be a part of Europe uh, we're all metric of course this little machine being American origin is Imperial um, very frustrating when I have every metric bolt under the sun and no Imperial bolts so if I was being really fussy I could get some Imperial bolts but today instead of getting Imperial bolts we're going to get some metric bolts and lots of ugga duggas so really I'm going to convert these bolts from Imperial to fucked up <laughs> might have to re-tap them but I don't really care at this stage all the ugga duggas Jobs are good. Oh, you twat. There's always one. There's always one. Back to him. Yeah, I like to make life hard for myself. That's how I roll. Sorted. On to the next bit. So that's the lid on. This lid has the parking brake. It also has the linkage from the left hand pedal sitting in the machine. Goes to here. Cross link bolts on here. And that activates little valve block linkage under there. So that's the final piece of the puzzle I'm missing to make the machine operable. Um, I'm not going to put the rear lid on until I get the chain box all cleaned out. I'm going to put some diesel in there and uh, wash all the uh, surface rust and mud and bits of bobs out. So that'll be the last step. So yeah, that's that lid on. So, just back from the tire shop and uh, we got ourselves a full set of nice new boots for the bobcat. I grant it doesn't look too impressed, but hey, she likes trees. We like diesel smoke. So yeah, I got um, got these rims off RHT plant. Uh, they were off a burnt machine, so got them blasted and painted, and a full set of new. BKTs. Um, these are actually bigger than what the machine came with so I hope I don't have any clearance issues and I hope I don't lose too much power but uh, it'll obviously gain some speed and comfort and most importantly better off-road ability in wet conditions which is the main thing I'm after so we'll get them in and uh, try them on. normally put music on uh, time-lapse sections but uh, yeah no matter what sort of music you put on uh, there's always 
there's always a certain group of people don't doesn't like it so it's kind of hard to please everybody so i'll just talk some nonsense until we get these tires fitted then we're going to go and get the overhead crane and uh, see if we can lift this old girl out of the corner as you can see my doorway is blocked by this uh, by this huge uh, garbage trailer um, so I have the luxury of an overhead crane uh, which came, also came from the John Brown shipyard in Scotland when it closed down uh, so we'll bring it down the shop and uh, lift up the bobcat and uh, see about getting it down to the other door and outside for uh, a play and a test run um, this big old overhead crane has a capacity uh, of 10 ton on the small hook and uh, 35 ton on the large hook um, extremely extremely handy piece of kit to have so uh, We'll hook the little bobcat up, which has a roof mounted lifting point. Um, ship trimming bobcat in its previous life, used to clear out uh, the holds of ships. So, a uh, very convenient lift point on this occasion. Please don't fall on me. Don't do that at home, folks. Move this crane out of the way.
absolutely unbelievable guys cannot believe it I thought this machine was getting cut up for scrap maybe some parts used off it there you go after a lot of sweat and effort that lives again So, um, sourced a much better shape tail door, um, again from RHT plant. Um, this tail door has been hammered to pieces. The original hinges are broke off it. <coughs> the chassis where the hinges were bolted onto has broken off. And um, because the middle has been dented in, they have spaced it out on some channel iron. So uh, I'm gonna cut all this garbage off and uh, fit fit the new door. Well, used door and uh, tidy up the whole the whole backside. Um, I got a service kit. Change the air filter, inner and outer, the hydraulic filter, the engine oil filter and the uh, diesel filter so all of the filters have been changed the engine oil has been changed and uh, the hydraulic oil has been basically changed because it was dry it was drained almost dry so it's filled up with fresh clean hydraulic oil um, I treated it to treat it to a little light bar and uh, unfortunately when I was messing about with that I've blown a fuse, um, I've blown something, I've checked all the fuses and they're all intact but I have no power so the arms are stuck up at the moment, um, I think there's solenoids on the uh, valve block that won't allow those to drop so I need to get a, uh, an auto spark electrician to sort that out for me as uh, I'm no good at that sort of stuff so, so that's the hold up at the moment but yeah um, I'm going to start and cut all this rubbish off and uh, tidy up the backside because it's an absolute mess. And I uh, might even paint, paint the ass end and get a nice new set of decals. Um, I got the, uh, the oil cleaned out, the chain box all cleaned out and um, fresh oil put in and the lid all sealed up uh, so yeah it's basically sitting ready for full full power action um, I intend to give it a, an extremely hard time to see if there's any issues but uh, I think she's good so yeah we'll cut, cut this uh, tail door off and all this gubbins and uh, take it from there Give me a huge thumbs up guys if you like seeing old machines being saved from the gas axe. Um, I love old plant and uh, if it can be saved and put to further use, I'll do so if I can get a bargain. Uh, you guys help support my, uh, my preservation of these old machines, so thumbs up, keeps the channel growing and uh, keeps me saving these old girls. I'll keep bringing you the videos. Thanks for your support guys. So that's all the crap cut off the back. We've got a nice flat face. Once I grind all the uh, remnants off, we have a nice flat face to mount up the new door with the new hinges. You can see where the old hinges have broken out, so that'll be an easy fix. So I'll clean all that up with the grinder, hang the door up on the crane and uh, weld it on. So yeah, stay tuned. So just wanted to share this awesome uh, cutout sent to me by the Artful Badger. Um, 
check out his Instagram, uh, you'll see his art projects. And I say art because this entire piece is hand drawn. Bespoke creation that he makes from high resolution images. Uh, so if you send him something you would like made into a hand drawn cutout like this, get in touch with Artful Badger uh, on Instagram and he goes under the name of Badger Welding 67 so massive thanks for that there I uh, just want to give him a little shout out because uh, this is what keeps bread and butter on my table and keeps me making videos and uh, an awesome little bonus uh, for all the effort so massive thanks to Artful Badger uh, check out his website if you like his work and you want to put in an order um, theartfulbadger.uk See you guys, check that out
that's about it guys um, I don't think there's any point me boring you with changing oils and servicing it because there's hundreds of other videos like that on uh, YouTube so yeah I'm gonna leave it there um, it's running it's tested out I'm satisfied that everything's tickety-boo you know, my only observation is the lift appears to be a little weak but I seen uh, somebody was fiddling at the valve block um, what I reckon was a relief valve so perhaps it's lowered the pressure a little bit I'll investigate that everything else seems absolutely fine lots of pushing power driving power speed smooth even yeah uh, absolutely over the moon I cannot believe I've managed to resurrect it so uh, so yeah guys, uh, hope you enjoyed the video, uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up, um, I'll keep making videos for you, um, as I said I'd like to try and have a bit of variety, so hopefully this was something a little bit different, I know uh, bobcats are super popular in America, so hopefully it goes down well with you guys, um, unbelievably useful handy little machine, I don't know why there's not more of them in the UK and Europe, um, I absolutely love them, great fun to drive, um, although I'm very rusty, it'll take me a while to get tuned into it again, but um, yeah, so as I was saying, I'm going to service it, tidy it all up, fill it with oil, clean it out, uh, fit a new uh, tail door, and new LED lights and flashing uh, amber warning lights and things like that. And then I might even treat it to a cheap paint job and a fresh new set of decals. Um, so yeah, that was the uh, little Bobcat 753 project. Um, as I said, uh, thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, if you want to see more, catch the next video, click the subscribe button. Uh, and I have lots of photos on my Instagram as well. You can check that out, the link's below in the description. So yeah guys, uh, I'll see you on the next video. Uh, stay safe out there, wherever you are in the world. Cheers guys, thanks for your support.